Hi traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. So um, let's go ahead and get our bias chart ready. And yeah, let's do our analysis. Uh, okay. Um, I was looking around, seeing a little bit of volatility. Okay, let's go over to the euro. So um, here's the euro dollar, and like I said, I'm I, I've, I really have been trading the euro poorly over the last uh, last couple of days. I've just been uh, or last couple of weeks. I've really been wussing out a lot. Um, I, I I had a short in the euro at 114. I closed at 114, then it drops, you know, to 113 immediately following. Yesterday I was going to short the euro at 113. I didn't. I failed to pull the trigger. You know, we dropped another hundred pips. Now, you know, we're at obviously we're at support. I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to start. You know, being on the short side after having a two hundred pip drop in just the last uh, week and a half. So, you know, the euro looks to me like we, we'll probably get some sort of bounce here uh, coming up. Uh, the question is how far are we going to drop? And and I would assume that one twelve is going to offer a support. That is a seven eight six retracement from this low over here. Um, uh, it's there's around you know it's obviously a round number so I'm I'm gonna write down 112 you know 112 is being pretty good support for today now what I'd rather do is I'd rather you know if I'm if I'm gonna trade the euro I'd rather take a shot at it being on the short side but question is how far are we gonna rally and I and I think that 113 is gonna offer resistance again it's not um, this isn't you know, this isn't brain surgery or rocket science here. It's just you know making sure you have the right prices to trade from. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna also uh, start by I also need to say something else. Liquidity is gonna get really poor, and it's gonna continue to get poor um, uh, as the the next um, you know the next week wears on. You know, as we get through the end of this week, um, you know, liquidity is going to really start to dry up, and um, you know, you just got to be really careful. Uh, I think that uh, you have to be very um, careful about you know the positions you're taking in the market. Wait for the prices that you want, and um, don't uh, don't you know chase the market. What whatever you do. Okay, don't just don't chase the market. You know, like we broke in a new lows here. That, that what would be not very surprising to me would be that the euro, you know, breaks above this one one twelve thirty level and it starts to squeeze back to one thirteen. If that's the case, then you want to be on the short side at one thirteen, not you know be at the short side down here because you had some sort of breakdown. You know, you want to, you know, um, just like I said, be very careful about chasing the market. Uh, and, and and in this in this case, this is a good this is a good situation or a good example that uh, you know we have relative strength that diverged here. You look in the hourly, we're oversold here, we're less oversold now, and we're at lower prices. So you know the chances of it squeezing higher could happen. You know it definitely can happen. So just don't don't get caught um, don't get caught you know chasing prices anywhere. All right, let's go over to the cable. So obviously the the brexit you know um, risk is high and the market is feeling it here let's get rid of this we don't need that fib um, you, you can see right here support you know is right at uh, 14110 now I don't know if this is a very important support level I have to I'm gonna have to look right now but um, There's your 618 here. Let's, uh, ooh, I didn't want to do that. Let's, let's try that again. Hundred and sixty one percent extension of that move is there. Did 
this right here will be resistance any which way you slice it. Okay, so that's at 143. 143 is resistance. Where is support? That is the question. Where is support? Um, that 161% extension is probably fairly significant. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write down uh, 140 75 uh, as support. Oops, shoot, I didn't even finish that. Hold on, 113. Okay, so uh, 140 75 as support. Resistance is gonna be at 143, way back up here. Um, we're still in a big range, uh, but th this breakdown below this this trend line through here actually makes it somewhat bearish. But I, I'm going to just put it in as a range because you know I, I know like uh, ICM. I guess is not going to do any more polls, but there could be another poll. Uh, look, look, as we approach as we approach next week, I would not be surprised to see the Remain camp pick up some steam in some last minute polls. Again, you know, it's kind of like the Scottish referendum. You know, you you get closer to the you get closer to the vote, people start getting a cold feet. You know, uh, maybe maybe it's not such a good idea that we leave. You know, we don't. You know, we don't like uncertainty. Um, and next thing you know, um, the 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 stay camp starts to gain some momentum as we close in on on the referendum next week. Okay, uh, that that is possible. It's very possible. I know the leave camp is very strong and everybody's starting to think, oh God, you know, maybe this Brexit is for real. But then again, you don't know how the UK voters are going to vote. And and I um and and I from the beginning have said that, you know, when push comes to shove, you know, I think people in the UK, generally speaking, I say generally speaking, maybe not in the circles that some of you run around in, um, maybe not in some of the uh, 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 social circles you run around in for those of you that live in the UK but you know I, I'd say from an, uh, as an American looking in most people in the United Kingdom are very um, are, are, are more conservative so when like I said when push comes to shove they, they people you might see that vote sway a little bit I really think it's going to be a very close vote I really do, and uh, I, I I think that the polls might start showing that that the leave and stay camp is very you know neck and neck, and um, you know the pound could bounce as a result. But I will say this that I think it's going to be very close, and I I assure I'm 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 glad I'm not going to be around trading because the volatility is going to be very great. Okay, so anyway, just you know, be very careful trading the cable. Let's go over to the Swissy. So the Swissy, uh, unsurprisingly, has been a little firm. You know, we talked about this yesterday about you know the bounce back in the dollar Swiss. You know, it's going to be fairly short lived because the Swiss is in demand right now. The Swiss is in demand. You know, it's in demand because you know just in case of a brexit you know the 
traders and investors want to own the Swiss franc. Now, I think if there's no Brexit, the best trade out there is going to be sh short Swiss, almost across the board. You know, buy Euro Swiss, buy Aussie Swiss, buy Pound Swiss. Those are going to be good trades, in my opinion. All right. If there is no Brexit, if there's a Brexit, the Swiss franc, we're going, you know, we're going straight down. Uh, the, the Swiss franc's going to gain strength, and we're going straight down. Uh, what do we do with it here? I don't know. Uh, I would say supports at 95, uh, 95, 75, which is right here. Resistance is uh, right now. 96.75 and we're in a range okay uh, let's go over to the yen so the yen it's got to be watched very carefully uh, if, you know if you were tuning in a little bit late I will reiterate this 105.50 is major any, there's here. I'll just do it like this. One o five fifty. That's how big that support is. It's major. Like in every sense of the word, major. Like there's there's no other bigger support level that matters right now. Okay, because this is this is what is going to define risk aversion. If you don't know why it's so big, you have to go out to a weekly chart and go, okay, well, you know, we have this, you know, head, shoulder, shoulder, breakdown, completion. Um, we came right down to the the high was uh, 105.43. The low here was 105.54. And so that 105.50 is major. We break through that, the dollar yen is going to give it up. Probably we're going to probably see a hundred yen, um, and uh, that would be extremely bearish. Extremely bearish. Okay. That would happen. If the Nikkei continues to break down, if stocks continue to break down, and Brexit fears continue to grow, all right. Now to take off this downside pressure, which I, I, I have to, I have to put this down as bearish. I mean, it's just it is. Okay, to take off this downside pressure, we need to come all the way back to like 108, really, like that. But um, that spike high is at uh, one oh six fifty seven, so one oh six sixty. Basically, one oh six sixty has to be taken out uh, to take the downside pressure off near term. Okay. Okay, let's go over to the Canadian. So I have only a quarter size Canadian left now, uh, but I'm long the Aussie Canadian and the Euro Canadian too. So it's you know it's I still have plenty of Canadian exposure. I got uh, I, I put an order out to sell uh, some of my dollar Canadian last night at one twenty eight fifty. I um I got out of that. Right, and so I've, I'm, I'm, you know, my position size is pretty reasonable, and it's, uh, it's, at this point in time, it's very uh, manageable. All right, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be opposed to buying, the, I wouldn't be opposed to buying more dollar Canadian because I still feel that crude oil is going down to forty-seven fifty. Okay, but notice that we're at a thirty-eight percent retracement. Okay, one twenty-nine, which is the fifty percent retracement. Uh, which comes up right here 
that looks, you know, doable. Let's see, that spike low comes in at 128.93. So basically 129, I would say that the next level of resistance is, so I'm gonna write that down. One point two nine. Okay. Support. It's hard to say. It's hard to say where support is, but I, I think that um, this right here is one twenty eight ten. So I think that any even even if you try to break through one twenty eight, I think one twenty eight will probably end up holding. Um, I'm gonna write down one twenty eight. I think 128 will be supported. I wouldn't mind even actually owning some more dollar Canadian down there at 128 if we can get it. Uh, we are in a range right now. Okay. Um, let's go over to the uh, the Kiwi. So I am out of I am out of my Kiwi dollar shorts. I closed them last night when we were right here at uh, seventy twenty two. I think is where I closed out, like right here, because we basically filled the gap. So last night when we uh, were right, I want to say like right here, I was like, okay, that's pretty much filling the gap. I'm, I closed out of my Kiwi dollar shorts. I've been short since seventy ninety since last week since uh right at the day the the rbnz um rate announcement so right here i've been short since right here and i added a little bit more when we were up here somewhere and like my my cost average was like 70 90 something like 70 96 or something i closed out last night now um we have continued lower obviously one of the one of the things that um, I, I retweeted uh, a gentleman tweeted me this trend line here and um, you know we were breaking it okay so now we're we're basically in uh, pullback mode here you know what I need to leave that question is how far are we gonna pull back so we gotta figure out where the next support is. So if the Kiwi continues to pull back, um, 69.65. So 69.65 is the 38% retracement. Also, that would coincide with this breakout point right here. So I'm going to write down 69.65. That should be pretty uh, good support on the way down. Now, uh, if you want to try to sell the Kiwi, which I'd love to sell the Kiwi on a rally here, I'd love to see a rally back to like this. I would love to see that. I don't know if that's going to happen, but 70-70 would be a great place to be on the short side of the Kiwi, in my opinion. Okay? All right. I'll be back in a few minutes. When I come back, we'll do the Aussie, dollar index, peso, all that fun stuff. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a few minutes. Thanks, everyone. All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. Uh, you were listening to the uh, Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. Um, we did the, uh, the, uh, the Kiwi, so we got to do the Aussie here. Um, 
I was just watching the Canadian. Uh, my last piece of the Canadian. I'm, I'm offering it out for sale at uh, 129, just so you guys know. Um, so the Aussie dollar. Um, that's how I feel about the Aussie right now. I um. Let's remove this and let's go measure from, let's get rid of this. We don't need that now. We know we stalled at a 50% retracement, so I can get, remove that, right? So here's the four hour, so you can see. Okay, so we stopped at the 50% retracement. Boom, right? Obviously, previous support, that's a big deal. This support might be a big deal, but we're going to find out right now. Let's get rid of that. Let's uh, go from the lows here. Okay, you see that? To the high. 50% retracement. Since we respected a 50% retracement on the way up, we probably have to do it on the way back down too, I would think. So, 50% uh, retracement comes in at 73.20, but 618 comes in at 72.80. This is at 73. I, I, I'm going to write down support at 73, but um, we, we could actually go a little bit lower than that, possibly. Uh, I'm going to write down 73 as uh, support. Resistance is going to be back at 74 cents, right? So I think if you're going to trade the Aussie, you do it like this. You know, you short it at 74 cents. Or if you want to be on the long side, you wait for a move to 73 cents, maybe 72.80, something like that. I don't think there's a whole lot to do with it right now. All right. I'm going to write down 74 cents. Not great resistance. It's just resistance. All right. I think you want to trade the, uh, the extremes here. and That's what I would be thinking. Okay, we're in a range. Uh, dollar index. All right, so the dollar index, let's go out to a daily chart so you can kind of see. The, the daily chart, let me remove this. We don't need that right now. We do need that. We probably do need that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so... Uh, Everybody knows we, we stalled at a 618 down here. We stalled at a 618 up here. So that's why this 95 cent level is huge. Um, 95 cents. It's a huge resistance because if that clears in the dollar index, then you know that the dollar index is probably going to try to take off again. Let's get rid of this channel. I don't think we need that channel for now. Okay. But if we if we break this 90 90 Five cent level. That's going to be a big. That's going to be a big one. Um, you know, we're going to really start to squeeze in the dollar, right? We can break back above that now. Support is ninety four and a quarter still. Okay, so we got ninety five cents, ninety four and a quarter, and you just kind of have to play this range. And 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 I would say that uh, you know a breakout. Let's go over here. Like if you see the dollar spike above here, and that's going to be a breakout above the highs. You know, if we get a dip, that might offer you a place to be on the long side, you know, down there. But if we break below here, then it's gone. You know what I mean? And you could always try to short the, the dollar here and try to play it lower. I, I just don't know if there's a lot to do with the dollar. And like I said, I've got dollar Canadian, and I've got a small position. That's my only position left. And I'm just kind of sidelined right now with the dollar. I'm, I'm not too confident on what I want to do with it at this point. Okay. So 74 and, or uh, 74, 94 and a quarter. Okay. And we are in a range. Okay. Now this is crazy. This is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. The peso. 
Are you freaking kidding me? This thing is just telling you to go shove it is what it's telling you. I, I'll tell I, I, I'm going to tell you guys. I really think that we are going to be. I say we. I really think that we are going to be shorting the dollar peso at twenty. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? It sounds crazy, but I think what's going to happen is the market's going to go risk off, and we're going to do this. That's what I think is going to happen. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen today. It's I think that's how I'm going to be playing it in about a month from now. Maybe even maybe even higher than that. Maybe up here. Um, I mean, the, honestly, this move has been just nuts, and I'm so, I'm literally so pissed that I sold it right here. I sold it right here. I was long, right there, right where my cursor is. I had, a, I had a couple people tweeting me charts of the peso, and it kind of freaked me out, and I pussied out of it. That's what I get for listening to other people and their analysis. It's like, damn it. <laughs> you know? Because I, cause I, I was so confident of the move higher. That's the thing that kills me. Because I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. Anyway. Wait, let me draw that again. Hundred and sixty one percent extension is nineteen oh seven. It's probably gonna contain it for today. The the golden fib is whoops. Uh the golden fib is uh is really good at containing prices. So nineteen oh seven. That should be resistance today. Now support is gonna be any anybody who's short is like get me the hell out of this thing. Um, why am I short? And any dip back down to uh, 1872, I'm going to cover. That will be key support on the way back down. And this thing looks bullish as I'll get out. With crude oil breaking down, with risk aversion elevated, the US dollar Mexican peso looks like it wants to absolutely shove it up anybody's shorts rear end. Mm-hmm. Sure does. All right. US dollar Norwegian Krona. This thing is strong. Look at how strong this is. This is another one. I sold it at 824. Uh, right there. Yesterday. Morning. Yeah, that's good. That was good. Smart. Um, Marin Stormer closed his Norwegian Krona this morning for 865 pips. That is awesome, Eric. Freaking wonderful. That is really, really great stuff. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of some of this junk we don't need. I would say today's high is significant, 837. Because if that breaks, we're probably going higher. We're going to continue to squeeze. Let's get rid of this here. Now, buying it on dips makes sense. I mean, if you buy it back down at 825, that'd probably be great. I'd be a buyer down there.
U.S. dollar Swedish krona. Same thing as the Norwegian krona. Same exact analysis, pretty much. You can get rid of that too. Thirty-eight percent retracing, so eight twenty-three, eight thirty-two, eight twenty-three, eight thirty-two. See, this is um, it's a thirty-eight percent retracement that's containing. If you guys want to short the Swedish krona right now. Actually, it's probably not a bad short. <sighs> oh, nice little shooting star here. If you short it, just put your stops above 832. I'm not going to do it. I'm just saying. Oh, it's dollar Canadian. Go, CAD, go. Go, CAD, go. Go, go, CAD, go. Dollar Canadian, new highs. Okay, your bias chart's done. Like I said, if you want to short the Swedish krona, you, 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 the risk the the risk is manageable. I mean, it is. Uh, I was thinking about it, but I'm just not going to do it. Not right now. Not right now. I'm I'm kind I'm, I'm not too sure what uh, what I want to do with the the dollar at the at this point. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through some of your questions. Hey, we have retail sales in 15 minutes. Woohoo! Retail sales, baby. What a day. So exciting. Retail sales in the house. That's right. All right. Um, Walter says, good morning, Polly. And